But as you've said, up at the top, they're all the same people. The uh, corporate uh, executives go to and from the uh, government. They hold positions in the government. Uh, the uh, people from the uh, Trilateral Commission and the Bilderbergers and all, they're all corporate people. And uh, they have their relationships and interlocks with the banks and with uh, universities and foundations and all that. So to talk about one, so you're really talking about one source of power instead of corporation on one side and government on the other, because it's all one pot, as you said. I, I think it's become one pot. Not only that, is uh, you, you don't have any help, I say, voting for a Democrat who may be a little more critical of large corporations. But we know Democrats are just as much in bed with big government, too. Here's a chart which shows the people in the Federal Reserve System who are from the CFR. If you look at the members of the Federal Reserve, you find out that they don't ask people like me to be on the Federal Reserve, even though I've had experience on studying the issue and been on the banking committee. They ask only the people who are casually referred to as the insiders, those from Wall Street and the banking industry, the Paul Volkers and the Alan Greenspans of the world, they're on the inside. They know how to deal with the establishment, and they get these positions, and therefore it is a tremendous amount of economic power falls in the hands of what we call the Open Market Committee, the Federal Open Market Committee. They control from day to day the supply of money. They become the legal counterfeiters. You know, if you and I had control of the printing press, we could do a lot of, a lot of things, you know, self-serving. That's what happens when the politicians create the central bank that, get that to control the money. Now, this control of the central bank and the money goes on regardless of which party is in power, right? It never changes. You know, uh, uh, they change a person here and there, but it's always the insiders. It's always from the same group. So if you have a Republican as president or the Democrats, they're going to get the same appointments. Appointments never change. And this can be said about the Secretary of State and the Secretary of Defense and the Secretary of Treasury and, and the Federal Reserve Board members. They all come from the same group. And even though, I guess naively, I was hopeful that the same group of individuals would not have as much power under, Ron, under Ronald Reagan. So uh, either side, they're, they're the same people control it. And, you know, Ronald Reagan spoke sharply against the Trilateral Commission, but he was the first president to host the Trilateral Commission in the White House. Yeah. I mean, that's how blatant it is. It's, this, it's the same group of people. We've referred several times to the Trilateral Commission. Let's go back to an older program where we talked in greater detail about the organization. Um, again, we find David Rockefeller at the very pinnacle of the Trilateral Commission. They describe themselves as a private North American, European, and Japanese initiative on matters of common concern. What they would like to do is fashion a stable world order on the, uh, after the fashion of the one uh, produced after World War II by many of the same people and certainly the same interests as represented, for instance, in the Council on Foreign Relations. The uh, kernel of the idea for the Trilateral Commission arose in uh, the head of probably its mastermind, Zbigniew Brzezinski, who's now National Security Advisor to President Carter. Uh, in 1970, he talked about um, the need for a collaboration between these three areas of the world, Japan, North America, and Western Europe, the need for collaboration to uh, face certain problems, um, obstacles to the continued expansion of the capitalist world order. By July of 1973, the Trilateral Commission was officially formed. Shortly after that, it's interesting to note, um, they had selected already um, now President Jimmy Carter and Walter Mondale as missioner, uh, commissioners. They did this expressly for the purpose of running them for uh, high office in the United States. Um, there were certain meetings between David Rockefeller and Jimmy Carter as early as 1971 in which um, David Rockefeller decided that Carter would be the perfect person to build their hopes on. So Carter, um, Mondale, and in the Republican camp, Elliot Richardson, were all 
invited to be commissioners uh, with the hope that the, w at least one of these people would be uh, the future president. As it turns out, of course, Carter has become president, and out of the 74 American commissioners, about 21 of them are now in the Carter administration. Cyrus Vance, uh, Harold Brown, Secretary of Defense, Michael Blumenthal, Secretary of Treasury, C. Fred Bergston, Assistant Secretary of Treasury, Warren Christopher, Deputy, Deputy Secretary of State. The list goes on and on. Uh, Warren Christopher, Richard Cooper, Lucy Wilson, Richard Holbrook, Anthony Lake, Andrew Young, surprisingly. They're convinced that there is too much democratic participation um, allowed, that there's too much. It's making economic planning of the world capitalist system very difficult for them. So one of their domestic goals is to centralize economic planning. Um, the governability of democracy, according to um, Samuel Huntington, who is a very influential person in this group, depends upon an expansion of capital and continued accumulation, which is virtually impossible if the people run the system. Uh, they think that an elite is much better equipped to make decisions which maximize profits. What's the crisis of democracy that they're concerned with in all of the democratic society, the technocratic and policy-oriented intellectuals, doing our job in the interests of the people who have real power? What Huntington has realized is that the party system it can be used very effectively to uh, reduce participation. In, in his words, um, apathy is very functional. And the party system can be used, in a sense, as a rubber stamp uh, for policies that are made elsewhere in the system. I think it's, it's important to note that all of these groups that we're talking about have as their ideal the stabilization of the status quo, the management of the system from concern with management of the very top from the very top of the world capitalist economic order to domestically the management of the, uh, the polity here in the United States. And that, that is clearly their uh, main goal. Isn't One it? way uh, that this is to be achieved will have to be through um, restrictions on the press, the media, and they've called for uh, restoration of the law of libel for the press, which uh, uh, people associated with the media and the press know that that could be a very dangerous kind of weapon by the government against freedom of expression. Uh, the liberals, as in the Trilateral Commission, uh, all in fact agree. Uh, they, in the same study, they say that the media threaten government authority by their adversarial stance, and they've got to be curbed. If they can't curb themselves, the government is going to have to move in to curb, curb them. Um, part of the policy is to have a kind of consensus, a coordination between the five or six major industrial uh, powers in the, in the world. Um, they see the need not only for, well, they, they recognize there's a great deal of interdependence now. They see the need for, for much more cooperation and coordination than there's been in the past. So they think that five or six key industrial states getting together can in turn dominate the major third world countries. These countries, of course, supply cheap resources, cheap labor, which are necessary for the industrialized countries. They recognize that the demands in these uh, third world countries are increasing for a greater share of the pie. So they advocate giving a certain degree of power control and a, a bit larger piece of the pie to certain clientele elites within third world countries. In this way, um, the in major industrial powers can control elites in third world countries, which in turn supplied liberally with um, taxpayer funded military hardware um, would be able to subjugate their own population. What's your conclusion about the Trilateral Commission? They describe themselves. They say that they want a kind of concentric circle of decision making. And this would involve uh, these few major 
industrial states and, and not wide participation from these industrial states would be participation by the economic elites, such as um, David Rockefeller, of course, uh, directing. That would be the core, the central aspect of this concentric circle they talk about. Just outside that, they would involve, to a lesser extent, um, industrializing countries, the more advanced third world countries. And beyond that would be a circle of these world organizations like uh, the World Bank, the IMF, and other international agencies, which would establish the, rec uh, the regulations by which third world countries and um, all other industrialized countries would be regulated. The, the hope is, of course, to coordinate, to stabilize, and to reduce competition.